All right, MTV, I see what y'all did there. Y'all got tired of me talking crap about these episodes. So y'all was like, I'm not going to have her talk crap about this episode because y'all came through. This episode was giving. What's going on, y'all? It's your favorite, Auntie Momo. We are back again for another episode review of Catfish, y'all. This is a long ass, once again, season eight. What is this? Episode 53, Romeo and Michael. This episode was cute, y'all. It was really, really cute. I thought the catfish was cute. I thought the person get catfish was cute. It upset me a little bit in the middle, but then it got better. Um, notice your auntie got her nails done because she is talking with her hands, okay? Uh, uh, mm -hmm. Snatch the air, snatch the air. This is, uh, I said this is pop that thing purple. Yeah, little pop that thing purple, whatnot. So, bitch, gonna be talking with her hands. You don't like it? Click off. Now, I'm just playing. Don't click off. Make sure you subscribe to my channel, hit the notification bell, all of that, so you don't miss none of these good episodes. And miss me talking with my nails, my new set every two weeks. Okay. <laughs> Ain't nothing like a fresh set new nails, girl. When I tell you, I literally just came from the nail shop. Like, oh my god. <laughs> A real cute, and you know, I got on the toes that match, <sighs> anyways. Oh, y'all, this episode was cute, it was giving, I was here for it, and I don't want this review to be too long. So, y'all, let's go ahead and um, hopefully, y'all are ready for it because you already know I'm ready to give it to you. So, let's go and get up into it. Snatch the air. All right, I'm gonna be reading for my notes. Um, we have Romeo, Romeo is super cute. Romeo is nephew, okay? He came on with the long, thick, luxurious, natural, okay? Beautiful smile. He just had real good energy. I thought Romeo was super, super cute, super darling. 23, he's from Philly, currently living in ATL. Child, let me let y'all know how he's living in ATL. I'm gonna let y'all know in a minute. He's only been out for about a year, though, okay? Before that, when he was in high school and all that, he was dating girls as a cover-up because he wasn't comfortable to come out as himself in Philly. Okay, I'm guessing in, in West Philadelphia, born and raised, you know, it was some, you know, niggas out there up to no good starting trouble in the neighborhood and so all of that. He just didn't have a good time growing up being down low, basically, in Philadelphia because everybody already knew what the hell was going on with him. So for about a year ago, he got a DM from Michael. Michael is this guy, basically, that helped him come out of his shell, helped him to be who he is, live in his truth, not be afraid of who he is. He really helped Romeo just come out and be free. And so, of course, he is in love with him. That's all he see. That's all he know. So much so in love with him that seven months ago, Michael actually convinced Romeo to move to Atlanta where he is, right? Hold on, y'all. They, they ain't even cold part, though. So, Romeo. Okay. Shout out to Mildred from two catfish episodes ago because she hit me up. Shout out to you, girl. So, I know some of y'all catfish will be watching these, these right here. Romeo, if you happen to see this, nephew, after 30 days of me being in the same city with this person and we ain't talked on the phone or FaceTime, it's kiss your ass. Kiss, I mean, I kiss your ass, kiss my ass all goddamn day. But he's been living in Atlanta for seven months. And in seven months, he ain't seen Michael, ain't talked to him on the phone, and ain't FaceTime him. Only way they've been talking is through text messages, okay? First met on IG when he slid up in the DMs. After that, they exchanged phone numbers and they've just been texting for the last year. And in the last seven months, he's in the same city as you with my new nails. Yes, I'm talking to you. And you still didn't meet up with him. I don't know. You know, young. I'm just calling it what it is. And don't take no offense to this young, dumb, and full of cum. You was loving on him. And you thought he was loving on you. And that's, that's just what it is. I'm just not what it is. And the only pictures that he has of Michael is like two, three pictures that he got from his Instagram. Ain't even got no personal pictures of him. I mean, all the red flags. <laughs> What's not clicking, Steven? All the doggone flags is right there. I'm just saying. Now, a couple of weeks ago, Romeo got a random text from somebody saying that um, Michael is not the person who you think you've been talking to. Here's the real person. And it was a link to the actual real 
Michael, right? Real, real Michael. So he clicks on the link, but he says that the guy's name on there is Arquez. And it's a whole bunch of, like, it's it's a whole different po profile or whatnot, but it's pictures of said Michael. Now, Romeo, oh, Romeo, why for out did you have to be this dumb Romeo? He says he just thought maybe Michael came up with a new page or something. Now, mind you, I'm putting a picture up of Romeo again. Romeo is not no bad looking little dude. Why you fell for this obvious catfish? I don't know. But it was cute. It was a good episode, though. Now, when Neve and Cammy actually get on the Zoom with Romeo to get the rest of the tea, they, um, Romeo is showing him or showing them text messages between him and Michael. One thing that Cammy knows, and like I always say this, Cammy is such a good dynamic to the show. She points out things that Neve may not necessarily catch because he doesn't have that woman's touch or that woman's intuition about it. No tea, no shade, no pink lemonade to leave because we already know catfish ain't catfish without Mr. Catfish as it is. But Cammy adds that extra. And then the fact that it's a black woman, <laughs> snatch the air, a black woman on there representing next to a white man and she's doing her thing. And she, like I said, she points out a lot of stuff that you wouldn't necessarily notice. Like in the text messages, she noticed that there's um, there's errors with the punctuation. There's always a space and then a period and then another space before, you know, sentences or whatnot begin. In text messages, something that I learned from Cammy as well when, um, cause I didn't had a couple of people that slid up in my DMs on some catfish shit too. And that's no, little shit like that I'd be noticing. I'd be like, ooh, you present yourself as a man coming in my DMs, but I notice the space period, then a space, and then emojis. Shout out to my niece, Cammie. My niece, Cammie, told me that. Um, so, like I said, she noticed the, punctu the punctuation, and off top, she was like, this is probably a female that's sending you this because men don't normally send text messages like that, right? So, it's time for the investigation, okay? They end up first sending a message to the real Arquez, the link that um, Romeo ended up getting because they already like, okay, they done did a big portion of the investigation right here. We see who it is because the link was legit to the IG page. It was like 115,000 followers. Like this person was legit who it was, right? So they end up sending him a message, you know, go ahead, holler back at us with somebody out here catfishing bitches and bitches catfishing with your picture. We need you to clarify some shit, right? They end up searching the phone numbers and one of the numbers came up registered to a Tremaine in Philly. They searched like all the different databases that they got and all the databases that they searched the phone number came up as Tremaine. They end up searching the internet or whatnot for Tremaine and they get, it searches back to this page for this female, right? Now, of course, they're thinking that it could be her because once again, they haven't talked on the phone in a year and they haven't FaceTime. So then like it would make sense if it's a female that number's coming back to, right? They end up searching Cash App with the anonymous phone number, the whistleblower. The, the, the snitch or whatnot that sent him that, sent Romeo that message, like this ain't who you talking to, right? The anonymous phone number end up coming back to a guy named Lanier. They end up search, doing a Google search for Lanier and they don't really find nothing like an old Pinterest page. It's just basically a dead end from there, right? So they end up doing a Twitter search for our quest just to see what pops up. And of course, adult entertainer came up, all right? And you know how Twitter, let me tell y'all something. Twitter is the new porn hub. You want to get your little quick uh, off or something like that? Go to Twitter. Type in a search engine what you're looking for. All you need is a good two, three minutes worth of video. Bitch, I'm just telling you. Because once I seen that he was on Twitter, you know, as executive couch producer, I got to do my research. I got to do my part to make sure that the show goes like it's supposed to go. And I was with Neve. Bitch, when I was searching, I was like, oh, wow. Oh, damn. <laughs> Good golly, Miss Molly. I was like, okay, oh, all right. <laughs> I mean, it was doing something. Neve's eyes were buck. He was like, wow. I was like, yes. So they end up getting back to Romeo with the T. And of course, he's upset. He mad as hell. They end up showing him the Twitter as well. It's like, look here. Okay. This dude right here wouldn't have had no problem reaching out to you and showing you who he really is. I mean, he got his he got his third baby leg all up on here on Twitter, on the tweet. So he ain't scared to be who, you know, so we can pretty much assure you this ain't who you talking to. 
You know what I'm saying? Now, they also end up showing him the cash app that leads back to Lanier. Now, he says he actually knows Lanier. They went to middle school together. Lanier actually tried to holler at him a few times, but he curved his ass. But Lanier and him were friends, mutual friends on social media. Lanier would like all his photos, would comment on all his posts and all that. But Romeo was just kind of like, ooh, he wasn't really feeling them like that, right? So just then, Arquez ends up hitting them back. And when he texts them back, he texts Cam back because Kim was the one to text him. Um, he texted Kim back and he was like, okay, yeah, I hop on a Zoom. Is this about the woman in Philly? Everybody like, bitch, what you know about a bitch up in Philly? He gets on the Zoom and tells them that it's some lady that's been in Philly that's been catfishing bitches and bitches is catfishing using his picture. He's actually had to go so far as con uh, contacting different social media outlets that she's been on catfishing people and letting them know, hey, this bitch out here crazy. She on some single white female type shit out here catfishing bitches and that ain't goddamn me. That's how he know. He just knows that it's a lady from Philly. What the lady's name is, he don't know. Which again, that's putting two, four, six, and eight together. He's like, okay, well, and even Cammy is like, well, it's probably really is this Tremaine chick that's catfish and Romeo. So at this point, Neve um, tells Cammy and Romeo both to send a message to Michael, letting him know like, hey, nigga, the jig is up. We know that you ain't who the hell that you got them say you is. Come on up out the closet, right? Now, he sends a response back to them. This fool gonna say, I'm not a catfish. Nigga. He ends up hopping on the Zoom, and bitch, it's Lanier. His old classmate, Lanier. The one that they end up searching in the cash app and all that, found out who he is. Now, apparently, he don't know who the hell a Tremaine is. I'm just thinking because Tremaine was already catfishing with Michael's photos. She just got caught up in it some kind of way. I don't know. I don't know. It's just real, real weird how that doggone happened. Now... Lanier says, check this shit out. Lanier says that he goes by Michael in real life. He created Michael in junior high as a way for him to come out. Because with him being from Philadelphia, born and raised on the playground is where he spent most of his days and shit. You know, the fellas that was up to no good, starting trouble in neighborhoods, was out here fucking with these boys when they couldn't be truly who they were. You know what I'm saying? He was gay. It wasn't... It wasn't safe for him to be gay in Philly as a young boy. And so he created this persona as Michael and basically came out as Michael. This the shit that tripped me the hell out, though. When they asked him, why you say you're not a catfish? This nigga said, because he looked like Michael. I know he looked like Arquez. I was like, bitch, what? <laughs> no, you don't. I mean, you know, don't get me wrong, though. The catfish was actually really cute. Really good looking guy. I don't understand why he catfished Romeo the way that he did. Now, he said he didn't actually like go out seeking Romeo. That he, when he had this fake page and whatnot, he just so happened to run into his page. And when he ran into his page, that's when he slid up in his DMs. So he didn't go out seeking, trying to do nothing bad. The bad shit just came up on him. You know what I'm saying? If you can't go to Bella, no chase, bitch, where can you go? I don't know why this shit just popped up in my dial on head. Now, he says that, where was I at, bitch? I got lost. Now, they end up getting into it, going back and forth, because now Romeo is pissed off. Romeo is like, what was the point of you catfishing me? You know me. We from the same city. Like, what was the point of all that? He does admit that, you know, I was liking your posts, and I sent you messages before, and you didn't respond back to me, so boom. This is what I did or whatnot. Child, they end up arguing, going back and forth. Romeo telling this nigga, to, um, Michael, he looked like a fake ass Whoopi Goldberg. Bitch, I died. That shit was funny as hell. Then Neve starts to tell Michael, like, look here, you need to calm down. But not even Michael. What's that name, Lanier? Starts to tell him, like, look here, you know, you need to calm down because you're going back and forth with Romeo when he really has every right to be upset about what's going on. Child Lanier going to tell Neve to shut the fuck up. I was like, oh. Now, you know Neve is nephew. You know I don't play that shit about Neve. Bitch, I will stab you with a spork. 
behind my knee. I don't play that shit. That pissed me off. And then Neve came back on his ass. He said, well, I think you need to eat shit, my brother. He got mad at that. I was like, get, get on his ass, Neve. So much so they had to put this nigga in the backstage, in the background. They had to put this nigga on timeout. Put this nigga on ice. Cool his ass out because he just came in hot. He was doing goddamn most. And it pisses me off. It hurts my nerves when the catfishes have the nerve to come in and be defensive when you wrong. You wrong with my new ass nails, bitch. You wrong. That pissed me off. Now, after they put his ass in timeout, let him cool off, he does end up having a, uh, you know, one-on-one -on -one with Neve and Cammie. He explains himself and basically says that, you know, Michael is everything that he wishes he could be. Outspoken, full of life, not afraid to be who he is, you know, just living in his truth, being a bad bitch. Lanier is quiet, he's shy, he's reserved, he's in the closet, and he doesn't know how to come out and be who he wants to be. But he does understand that he cannot continue to keep on doing what he was doing. Now, they do tell him that, you know, the reason why Romeo was so upset is because he was the reason why he was able to come out and live in his truth and be who he wanted to be. That, I think, was good for Lanier to hear because he was then able to not be so defensive and be more sensitive about it. And it was like, okay, dang, what I did was messed up. I didn't know that I made this much of an impact on him. I'm sorry. I apologize. Which that defense came from the fact that he really did like Romeo and Romeo wasn't feeling him back. So that's why he came off hard like that, which I get, you know, I, I, I get that. I think we've all been there. We didn't all did that. But look at me having sympathy for that kid. Beach, beach. That don't ever dog gonna happen. But I get where he was coming from, right? And I like the fact that he realized he was wrong. He was able to come back. He apologized. He actually texted Cammy and apologized. Was like, look here, I'm sorry. I know I came off at you sideways talking at the side of my neck. You know what I'm saying? But I do want to be able to, you know, explain myself what was going on. So he was able to talk with Neve and Cammy. Like I said, they was able to talk him down, get him to realize what the hell he fucked up at. Once he got back on the Zoom with Romeo, he apologized to Romeo, which I really did like. And Neve even pointed out something like, y'all are both from Philadelphia. Y'all both, you know, young black men, same age, young gay black men, the same age. Y'all both have the same struggles that y'all were going through. If for nothing else, y'all can't be a couple. Y'all can at least be friends on the fact that y'all bond over that. You know what I mean? So, um... Romeo was just like, <laughs> I need a minute. I need some time. Like, I don't know if I can fucking trust you. He forgives him or whatnot, but he just ain't really fucking with him like that. So he told him he needed some time or whatnot, right? Um, but you know, at the end of the conversation, he wasn't he wasn't like rah 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 with him. You know what I'm saying? Like he apologized, he forgave him or whatnot. They left civil. They were both smiling once they got off the Zoom, which I really did like. I thought that was so super cute. So when it came to the follow up, they actually did meet in Atlanta. And although they are not romantically involved, they still have a good friendship. And um, Romeo is enjoying himself being single. I was like, they probably just got a little booty. <laughs> did a little hunching, did a little goosey. You know, so you know how you young gay black men do. I'm just saying, I got young gay black male friends. That's how, that's how I know. Because I be hearing all about it. I be hearing all about it. This episode was cute. I liked it. It was given what I need to be gave. And that it, it ended on a good note. I felt like. Um, a lot of the times, I'm not going to lie. I'm not here for the feel good catfishes. <laughs> just because I like that drama bitch y'all do too. That's why y'all watch me for the shit. But this episode was really cute. I will say for whatever reason, I don't know if it's just because I thought that both Romeo and Lanier was so super cute and I wanted them. I actually wanted them to be together. Even if they just goosing, y'all just fuck buddies, just get it in, you know, pop that coochie every once in a while, do what you do. I thought that was super cute. And I hope that whenever they get to Atlanta, they pop and pussy on the headstand for each other. That's, what, that's just what I'm hoping. That's just what I'm hoping, y'all. If it was anything that I missed with this episode, y'all already know what to do. Drop it down below and let me know. Please don't forget to like, comment, subscribe, and share. And your Auntie Mo, we'll see y'all in the next video. <laughs> with my little nails, why not? Peace out. <laughs>